Before we get started, we wanna remind you that this is the last episode before we take three weeks off. So a three week break, opportunity for you to listen to some older Ear Biscuits, maybe one you missed or your favorite one. And we'll be back uh, on August 19th, right after we get back from our big vacations that we will fill you in all about. Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we ask the question, are we too nice? Hmm. Are we too nice? Um, you mean ha- like too nice, like the old, wasn't there a musician named Too Nice? There was a rapper named D-Nice. Uh, there wasn't a Too Nice with like a two and then a nice? My name is D-Nice. I remember your brother owned that CD. I thought that was Denise. And it, was not, <laughs> it wasn't that memorable. There, uh, see, Jacob said there was a Too Nice. There's also a Too Nice? Well look up D-Nice because the letter D, the space, which is a space and then the word nice. Because too nice doesn't sound like a cool name for a musician. You don't wanna be too nice. D-nice. 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 Oh I know, Cole had that CD. Man I'd go into his room when I was going over to your house. He had it all. Hanging out with you. He, You didn't even have a CD player. He had a CD player man and he had like, he had rap CDs and I'd go in there and I'd listen to him and I'd listen to and them. Listen to him. I'd, I'd, well I'd listen to him talk about his CDs. And may occasionally he'd play them. He had much better music taste than you did. Well, he was, I think he also was. Oh, it's the older brother syndrome. Older brother, yeah. It's like I technically had access to his library. I knew it was all being handed yeah, but down to me. At you some couldn't point. play it though because you didn't have a CD player. Uh, I eventually had a CD player. Well, I, of course, eventually you did. But I had a tape player for a long time. It, that, it, there was a weird moment when he transitioned to CDs where I was a little bit left in the dark. You know, But also we had thin walls in the house and I and we shared a wall. So I kind of listened to like muffled D nice. Yeah, did you ever talk to him through the wall? I mean, I never I know this is not what we're talking about, but we're talking about it. This is relates to my much of my dream. It's kind Your of dream. I'm going I have to tell you the dream I had that you were in. Um All right, so we're going to talk about are we too nice? It is a question that we've asked ourselves I didn't talk and to each other many times, through but the wall. first your dream. I yelled at him through the wall and vice versa. Shut up. That kind of thing, you know. That's ironic. But there was no like prison sort of like communication between the two walls. And the reason I say prison is because that's what my dream was about. And I believe, and my wife pointed this out when I told her about this dream. She said, the reason you dream this is because of that question that we got in the live LTAT uh, at VidCon where the question was who would survive better in prison. <laughs> Uh, and your answer was not me. I just said, I don't think Linky Poo would do too well. In prison. <laughs> in prison. I, I didn't know what you meant by that. Uh, I think most people do. That um, wasn't very nice. Yeah, I'm not too nice, man. <laughs> I'm D-nice. <laughs> uh, okay, so I had a dream that you were in prison. And you were in prison <laughs> for murder. Oh crap. I knew no details. All I knew is that you had been falsely accused. Oh good. And I don't know if it was because I just knew in your character so well that you're not capable of murder, but I just think that the pretense. Don't think Linky Poo's capable of murder. Right, the pretense <laughs> in the dream was that I was going to talk to you about how we were going to get you out legally, not break you out, but I was gonna, I was like, It's a false accusation. So for some reason, the prison was in Keith Hills. (laughs) So the golf course, the gated neighborhood slash golf course that was uh, next to where you, we both grew up in Bowie's Creek. That we're going to next week. That we're we're going to visit and. and, and So all this is on your mind. Maybe Uh, there is a, I know they expanded the golf course. I I have not heard that they added a prison. (laughs) Well, golfers can be very, very dis- disorderly sometimes. They break clubs and stuff. It would be nice to have a detention center for them. So, so you were on your way to the prison which was in the golf course. I got, no, I was at the prison. I was at the prison and the prison was near the river. <laughs> the prison was basically where we're going to be next week. Okay. Like in that area like where Senator Morgan's old house was. Okay. And so I, um. 
I go and my mission is to talk to you about like, dude, we've gotta get a lawyer, like we need, like we need to engage, we have to try to fight this. Mm. And you were completely like disengaged. <laughs> it was like. I'd settled in. You had completely settled in, you were like. I see, I do well in prison. <laughs> Well, you I do make well. myself right at home. You do well in golf prison. <laughs> <laughs> you do well in golf prison, but did it, it did it have golf course accoutrement? No, it was. It was, was there like a? It was like a. It well, I'll explain it. It was almost like it was just a building, maybe with a gate, low security, Lo, like a medium to low security prison. Okay. For murder, <laughs> and uh, who, who did I kill? Supposedly, I, I, I don't have the details of the murder. I like the, it didn't register with me. I just knew that you were innocent, and I was like, I got to talk to Link about this. But when I began talking to you about it again, like you were like not responsive to the idea of like challenging this. Was, was I dejected or was I happy? What What was my state? In, you were indifferent. You were disengaged, and I was very mad. I was very upset with you. Yeah, because I, I did want to get into. Also, your emotional state, because I think this could be revealing. So before I made you angry, what was your emotional state? Were you crying, were you? The beginning of the dream, at least as far as I remember it was, I am at goth prison and I've got to, I've got to figure this out. I gotta get Link out of here. It was just very much just, that was it. And then I'm like, when I go in there and start talking to you in like the area where you can talk to prisoners, You've got on. A, you have on an orange shirt. Was like there an orange jumpsuit? No, I'm. No, I'm. Was there a glass? At a, I'm sitting at a table with you. Okay. And but no touching. And I was like, "Hey, man, like you didn't do this. Like we got to get your story out there." And you and you just weren't saying anything. You were kind of just like looking at me, like, "Why are you so upset about this?" <laughs> so then, the door opens. Oh. And I'm like. This isn't just like the door to the room opens and there's a hall. No, the door opens and there's just woods. <laughs> it's like oh, yeah. it's not a well designed prison. Like the Did, door opens and we can totally get out. Was there like music and a special light? Like, ha! Ah. That doesn't happen in my dreams. Uh, so I looked at you and I was like, let's go. <laughs> because I was, what was happening in my brain was we got to go through this long legal procedure to get him out. He's not even on board. Were you thinking about content? Were you thinking about our careers or were you just thinking about our friendship? I I really need to know, Rhett. Uh, I can make up an answer <laughs> that would Be make honest. you feel a certain way. No, no, no I'm saying I don't know. I, it, oh. It, well, oh. it, it's a dream, I'm, it's, fra it's a fragmented reality, you know what I'm saying? It so, was probably all wrapped up together. So. I was probably thinking like prison content. The funny thing is, is as you, you did, it, it took you a second to, be like, okay, I'm gonna go, but you you ran out after me. And my old Dodge Intrepid that I drove at the end of high school and the beginning of college was the car that I was driving because that's how these things happen in dreams. Mm -hmm. And I and I just get into the Intrepid and start driving. <laughs> and you are running after the Intrepid. <laughs> like it's a train, like catching a train? So in other words, I'm running away without the guy that I'm trying to get out of prison. <laughs> it's like, where am I going? I just visited prison. I don't have to leave in a hurry. I, it seemed that it was, I had a motivation issue, so you really needed to, then, you needed to get me off the dime. Then you're running next to the car. And then I'm like, <laughs> get into the car. And you're like, but my shirt is messed up. <laughs> What? And I look and the <laughs> sleeves of your orange jumpsuit are are detached and like you've taped them on. <laughs> and you're like trying to get the tape right. That's important. Can't get it <laughs> can't get into a getaway vehicle and if I'm your like, sleeves are not <laughs> perfect. I'm like, don't worry about the jumpsuit. <laughs> get in the intrepid. It, ironically, it would have been better to like shed the jumpsuit. You don't want to be driving yeah, yeah, around yeah. town in like a in an intrepid with a with a prison yeah, uniform right. on. So, Did it have like golf insignias or anything on it? No golf relation. Mm. There's nothing related to golf. Did I get in? You got in. We start driving down that part of the circle in Keith Hills and we're driving like towards Wiggins old house, like coming around that way. The big house. And Well, I guess prison's the big house, but he had a large and house. And apparently the security response is incredibly quick because literally we've been out of prison for 17 seconds and there's already cops with teams of dogs. Wow. Like coming, <laughs> cops with teams of dogs coming through the yards along the all the houses right there on the river. It's coming and, out of the woodwork. And we just drive by them. Slow. 
Yeah, I wouldn't want to draw any Just attention. keep it cool. I wanted to make sure they saw your your orange sleeves. <laughs> so, that guy's sleeves are intact. Well, they're taped a little bit. Nah, doesn't seem suspicious. Now, and as is the case with a lot of dreams uh, that reach a real ex- point of excitement like that, I woke up at that you woke moment. Up. You woke up. Th- then the weirdest thing happened. Now this was Saturday night. Uh, I ended up staying Saturday night uh, because Locke ended, ended up having some games in Anaheim, basketball games, so I was like, oh, i am already got the hotel room, let's stay at VidCon for another day. <laughs> and um, I w- so this dream woke me up at about five o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Now I had every reason and intention to go back to sleep, but the thing that I could not stop thinking about is how to get away from the cops. While you were awake? I was awake <laughs> and I was literally, I was trying to go back to sleep and, I, and I, as I would go back to sleep, the thing that I would al- almost begin dreaming about was picking up the chase where it left off and what I was gonna do, like a choose your own adventure. And I like, went through all these things, I was like, well, they're definitely like dry, trying to drive out. There's only one way out of the gate. Like there's no, there's, they're gonna have the gate barricaded, like we can't get out. Mm. So what we should have done is we should have gone down to the river. And I was like, should we have crossed the river? No, because they would find us, they've got helicopters and stuff. And I was like, no, what we should have done is we should have waited until it was night. And then we should have gotten into a canoe and gone way down the river. And then we should have gotten out of the river at one of those places where there was like a little hut for like fishing and hunting Mm -hmm. that sometimes people build on the river. Yeah and then let the boat continue to go down the river so they'll find the boat miles down the river. But they, and so they won't be able, like I had, I, I thought about this for Might 45 we, minutes. Might, that we died, you find the canoe, it's like, it's broken up on Oh, they drowned, rapids. yeah. Yeah. You but t- really, I, we're just living, living large in some little catfish hut. Could have taken off the jumpsuit, or at least the sleeves, put them in the river. It's like, oh, he either lost his arms, his sleeves, or he's, He's he's uh, he dissolved. Idea. Throw the sh- throw, yeah. You got to throw some articles of clothing. So you were thinking river. all of this, trying to go back to sleep, not wanting to think it. But I was like, if I don't figure out the best way to get away from the cops at the golf prison, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get good sleep. And when I figured out, I think it's canoeing at night. Then I was like, okay, and I went back to sleep. I haven't thought about it since. I don't think we ever actually canoed at night, did we? Of all the canoeing that we did on the Cape Fear River. No, any, I did a lot of. I don't recall any night. A lot canoeing. of night fishing, night fishing, and we did a lot of night river crossing. Yeah, because sometimes we would get down there too late or whatever. It's dangerous to be on a. Can, I mean, you need to have a spotlight, I would think, in order to navigate any any rapids or whatever. I also wonder: is there a? I bet you there is a golf prison somewhere in the world, and it's probably Sweden. <laughs> you know, they probably got. Isn't that where like the really posh prisons are, is that one of the Scandinavian? Scandinavian prisons in they, general are nice. Norwegian pri- prisons are nice. Are golf courses nice in, in Scandinavia? Why uh, am I asking you? I, I would think so, why would they be bad? Because it's cold, it's icy, we can get, it gets snowy up there. But it's not always snowy. It's like under the snow there's a nice golf prison. It only It only opens in the summer and then in the winter we send the the prisoners to the to the ski resort prison. That's what they do, you know. I don't know how it works, but if I am gonna ever kill somebody, it will be in Scandinavia. I I do think if I went to prison, and um, our working relation, th- this is how it would play out. Like you would have to do all the thinking. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna sit. I'm not gonna sit in there like uh, like the hurricane and like f- try to figure out my own defense. You know, and like yeah. start writing letters to see that. to advocates who can come in and, and get me out of you'll just be like me out of prison. Well, like, well, this, this is it. just how it is, man. Don't worry so much about it. I've already started etching how many days I'm here on my cell, and I've started way up here in the corner. So I ne- I, I don't want to run out of space. Like I'd be thinking things like that. Right. Like I you know you know you got to think strategically. You don't want to start etching the days on your cell. Like right in the middle, and then what are you going to do? A spiral pattern? No, you got to start yeah. in like the, the, an upper right hand corner. I don't think they let you do that anymore, and also don't think it's necessary because I think you just ask the guard 
what's the date and he just tells you. Or you ask your caddy at the <laughs> golf prison. You know, it's like, how many yards um, to my release? You know, do I need a three iron to get out of here? Is that, that is that a thing, a three iron? It, well, three wood. Three, no, three iron is the thing, yeah. Yeah, it's nine irons. Uh, you know, I wonder how it would impact the prison. Is that true, are there nine irons? Well, it just depends on what, totally. bag, what bag you're in. But yeah, you, you, yeah, nine iron is the highest numbered iron. iron. Okay, but See, then there are, I know stuff. There are, th there are as many as three or four irons of, of uh, increasing loft above that that are called like pitching wedge and sand wedge and lob wedge and gap wedge and things like that. And then some people like my father and me by the way, we don't play with a three uh, iron, we play with a three hybrid. It's for people who are, need, need a little bit more help because it's hard to hit those long irons. These are the kind of conversations I'm having in prison by yeah, the way. Yeah. I'm, well I'm gonna teach. I'm, I'm a gang leader. I'm, I'm a teach golf, golf gang leader. in golf prison. Oh that's your, that's your in. That's how I get into the prison. And then you're sneaking over there and digging a hole for me. With the three iron, I, am, I don't use it. For, I don't. I'm not going to use it to hit a golf ball with. I mean, I, uh, Chrissy and I, shovel. Chrissy and I, got in a little kerfuffle about you know in the wake of the, the earthquakes, and we were talking about the dynamic of, like why she she's gathering all this earthquake stuff and ordering it, and I was like, she, she's baffled, by my by my, just like I was acting in golf prison, just kind of I'm okay, it'll be fine. If I ignore the fact I'm in golf prison, I think it'll be okay. And I'm like, well, what you know, what, what, where, where does that come from? I don't know. It's not, I think it's a. Um, it's your coping mechanism. Well, and there's, I don't, you know, maybe there's, I don't know what the word is if it's codependency or if it's just laziness. But like, when you were ordering all that apoc apocalypse stuff, and I was like, hey, you know, can you just double your order? You graciously did. And I felt good about that. It feels good knowing that someone else is worrying about it. And I said, Christy, it's not that I don't think it's valid, it's that I think that I, I trust you, I know that you're very attuned to like the dangers associated with it and being prepared as much as possible. So like, I know I don't have to worry about that. I, I have this, to a fault, I have this heightened sense of like brain, like brain power allocation. And if I start allocating brain power to like earthquake or apocalypse preparedness, that's less I've got to allocate towards something else like perfectly optimizing our vacation plans. So that was my response to Christy and I was like, I, you got this girl and I got this girl? So let's not, I, is, there's no implied judgment here that I, but I, it does make me look a little stupid. It's like you look pretty stupid in the dream, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was the sleeves. It was the sleeves. They didn't I help. mean, they were taped. You, ta you should have taped them. I, you should have just gone sleeveless because that's a look that I think would work in golf prison. Right. You really assert yourself. Has there ever been a golfer, and I'm not talking about in prison? I think it's against sleeveless. The, I think it's against the dress code. They got a dress code. Yeah, I think golf know. and tennis. They need to keep. They need to loosen up. You have to have your shirt tucked in. Yes. Uh, I don't I mean, know. Basketball players have to tuck their shirt in, but I think that there's something to do with like. I think it's just a res it's res safety. It's respecting the defense. game, man. So I think it's just respect. Like you don't it's have to control. wear. Well, you know, you don't. And I think Tiger it's was old farts trying to seem like they. Well, no, I think I don't necessarily think so. I think it's just it's a tradition, but I think you know Tiger wears that mock turtleneck, a lot of times. Like he has, you know, he wears red on Sunday, and that's pushing the limits. And I, I don't recall specifically, but my guess is is that it must have been controversial when he decided to to wear that the first time. It's like, oh, it doesn't have a collar. I mean, maybe there was a discussion about the rules at that point. I don't know. Somebody looked that up. His shirt doesn't button, and it creeps up to the bottom of his Adam's apple. It's almost a turtleneck, but it kind of feels like it's like just pretending to be a turtleneck. Let's call it a mock turtleneck. Okay, well that's not what we're gonna talk about. We're not gonna talk any more about golf and turtlenecks in prison or golf prison. We're gonna talk about whether or not we're too nice and how that relates to some personal things and also some professional things. Uh, but first, we wanna let you know, you think you can grab that pen? You think you can reach all the way and grab that? Yeah. You ready? Yep. Look at that. Uh, this is the 
Mythical Society pin, Semper Curiosus, uh, which second and third tier members of the Mythical Society got when they signed up. Uh, we're making it available to everyone in the Mythical Society. I didn't say, I, I, I was gonna say everyone, everyone in the Mythical Society uh, at mythical.store, but you're gonna be, at the Mythical store there's going to be. For a purchase. Uh, uh, a code that you can, well, I don't exactly know how it is, but if, if you're on the Society, you will know how to get to uh, the listing at mythical.store and then how to buy it. Um, cool little pen. You know, uh, check out the Mythical Society. You know, sign up. I guarantee you'll love it. Well, that's quite a guarantee. If you don't, you can always quit it, but I bet you that won't happen. That's your that's your right though. This pin is really cool and we got other cool pins at uh, on the Mythical store. That Cotton Candy Randy pin, man. I, I see some pictures of that thing and it's like it's gonna jump out and whisper in your ear. It's a great design. Yeah. Mythical.store. Are we too nice? Um, I I I really don't have. I really don't know where this conversation is where this conversation is going to go. I maybe we can tee it up with. Well, it is true that we do find ourselves asking that question at times. There's different ways to look at this. I'm going to let you start anywhere you want. I'm just kind of setting the table because I think that there's. I get I get. Our public persona, like part of our brand is that we're nice guys, but I'd like to, so we can explore that. And it's not like, just public, it's, yeah. I, I, I do like to believe that it's private. And then obviously we can explore well. the, 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 the personal nature of, yeah, I, I, I think we're nice guys. Well, my most. Is that because we're Southern? Is that just because, yeah, is that for other, other what, I, or what are the reasons? What? I, we, I think we, we, we talked at some point about, you know, our conflict avoidance and how that was a, sort of a deeply Southern thing. Um, I think some of it is related to that. I, I, the, for me, the most interesting aspect of this conversation is uh, professionally uh, and how it relates to our content, but I do, because it's so fresh, I do, and it's it's very relevant. Uh, I want to tell this story that happened before my dream, and was probably the meal that I was digesting when I had my dream. Okay, which is a Saturday night dinner with my family. Now I've never taken my entire family to VidCon, uh, and this was the first time that that had happened. Uh, Friday, they they came in a little bit late, and it turns out Locke had a couple of basketball games in Anaheim that we had to stick around for. On I think I already said this. Just told so many people now. I'm repeating things, um, but. So we spent there, spent the night on Saturday night, and we were gonna go grab some dinner. And I was like, uh, "We should do something that's not like super close to VidCon because there'll be like, you know, there'll be a bunch of people from VidCon. And that technically, you're not even really supposed to. We're not supposed to be out and about anywhere near VidCon. It's a security concern, right? So they don't even let us do it. Um, and if you do, then you got. You, that's another night where you have to be nice. You yeah. have to manufacture niceness for fans. Right. And <laughs> because you're so mean in real life, which we'll get to later. And so you know that restaurant Roy's? There's like there's one in Pasadena. Uh it's like a Hawaiian place. Never heard of it. Uh I've seen it around. It's a chain that I think is not doesn't go outside of California. Maybe it does, I don't know. Uh but we were we wanted to go there. A Hawaiian restaurant? It's like a Hawaiian steakhouse, like a like an upscale Hawaiian restaurant. Okay. So not like a Hawaiian barbecue, like strip mall situation. And um, I was like, okay, let's go there. And didn't realize that it was actually very close to the convention center. Like it was far away from the hotel, but it was close to the convention center. And so I got a little bit nervous as we we're like pulling up, but it was kind of late. I was like, uh, there might be a lot, and so then as we're driving kind of past, it's sort of like an outdoor mall kind of area, I do see a lot of lanyards and I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of a VidCon crowd and you know, we had just done our meet and greet uh, and not that I don't have a capacity, I was actually just worried about kind of violating the rules, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I was also like, the kids have been here, I haven't spent a lot of time with them and I kinda wanna just go have a nice dinner with them. So I told Jesse as we were like pulling into the parking garage, I was like, I'm gonna do the thing that we talked about on the a previous. Sterling, the, the Sterling, Sterling K. Brown. Sterling K. Brown. We, we just call it the Sterling K. Brown. That that is the that is what it is, right? It's, and that is when, if approached, you say, "I'm with my family. I'm sorry." Like if, if somebody wants a picture or somebody wants an autograph or whatever, you just say, "I'm sorry. I'm with my family." 
And that's a very difficult thing. I don't know if you've instituted that, how many times you've instituted that. It's a very difficult thing for me to do because I am a nice guy, right? And and I also, for all the reasons that we talked about in the past, like I feel a sense of obligation to fans to to be nice and give them a moment. Now, so I go in, but I'm like, I'm gonna hold to this, guys. I was like, I'm gonna do the Sterling K. Brown. <laughs> We get out of the, and everybody's on board, family's on board, seemingly, at the time. Mm -hmm. We get out of the car, we go to the elevator that is gonna Roy go. Roy got an elevator? No, no, it, it was like, uh, there was a parking deck and then it was like an outdoor mall, so oh. you gotta go from okay. the parking deck up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Dang. Roy doesn't have an elevator that I know of. And we're getting ready to get on the elevator. My dad has an elevator in his beach house. Well, that's cool. Huh, just and, bragging a little. And a woman. This house is on stilts. A mom and a little girl, probably 12. Immediate test. Come up. Now I recognize at least the mom, but I think both of them from the meet and greet. They had just been in the meet and greet. Okay. I, I have thoughts, but go ahead. And but I kind of didn't remember that until after they went away. I, I be to be honest with you. I was okay. like, oh crap! I think they were the meet and greet. Mm. 250 people, it's not, you can't remember everybody. I bet they remembered it. Uh, <laughs> so I said, uh, she comes up and she's like, I saw them looking at me and I was like, here we go. Little girl comes up and she's got a bag and she's like, can I, would you please sign this? And when you say here we go, you're like, here we go. This is a test in front of my family if I'm gonna sternly K Brown this moment. Yeah. Okay, she has the bag. She says, will you please sign this? And what's the what's the family configuration at this point? Because I think that's important. It's it's four people in my family. Well, I know including who's me. in your. I mean, physically, where are they standing? We're all standing outside of an elevator, waiting for it to open. Okay. And I will say that no one else was around. Okay. No one else was around. But the, I literally in the car, not just said, thirty seconds ago, said I'm Sterling K. Browning this situation. And I'm not going off of that. <laughs> Lord girl says, "Can I? Can you? Will you please sign this?" And I was like. I'm sorry, I'm with my family. Oh, let's do. Okay, okay, okay. She looks a little upset, little, sh little shocked, <laughs> including the mom. But they, but, but they were nice enough, they were like, when you say family, they're like, oh, oh, okay, and then they kinda just went away. We get on the elevator. Shepard says, Dad, that was a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? what? <laughs> and, then Locke, and then Locke's like, yeah, and nobody was around. <laughs> I'm like, well, what? I'm doing this for y'all. <laughs> Why are you gonna criticize me? Mm, dang. It, because if you would've done it, you'd have got on an elevator and you imagined it playing out as you would have turned and said, hey, it was a little girl. <laughs> and they, there was no one else around. Right, and I got so close to doing it, but I was like, this is the first test. And you know what, and, and what else did, and then what did they say? Well, it continued, of course, throughout now, the night. I just mean the, uh, the assessment of that, was that the end of that, or did they say, I said, but I, you know what? No, 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 I said, you I'm, know what? We're glad you did I it. I feel Dad. bad, I probably should have called an audible in that situation, I like, no. I gotta read the environment better. No, but that's but that requires too much thinking. No, 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 no. You Listen. think I was still right? I'm your just, boys, I'm a nice guy. Your man. boys, too nice. I th I think they didn't articulate what they felt, which was prioritized, man. That's the point. And you know what? Yeah. You did the right thing. You did the nice thing. You were nice to those that you love the most for once. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> um, when, when we were walking the floor at VidCon, you ask if, if I've done the Sterling K. Brown thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you continue with your story. I'm talking with Lily because it was, the Sterling K. Brown thing happened to Lily and Christy. You know, it was like me going up to him saying, you know, my girls are big fans. And then, he's, and then, he, told, and then he Sterling K. Brown me and I gained so much more respect for the guy who I already had so much for. Right. So Lily, Lily experienced, you know, being on the non-receiving end of a Sterling K. Brown personally. And then, so, and we had had this discussion about, this can become a part of 
what I do. Yeah. So we're walking around the convention floor when it's just for creators and their families. But uh, with a lot of a lot of creators and their families want to come up to us yeah. and get pictures taken even in that environment. And I che- I actually checked in with you as we were going out into the And Lily did hall. first and she as we're walking in she was like, "Dad, are you, are you going to you going to tell him you're going to Sterling K Brown these people?" Maybe just call it SKB. SKB him? Yeah. And I was like, "I've already been thinking about that." Yes. Because they want to go to things. They're like moving and then they turn around and I'm back taking a picture with somebody and it is very frustrating. It's like a perfect place to SKB. And she asked me about it. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And then it it immediately happened. And I was like, I'm here with my family and I gestured and they were walking ahead. So it was like, it was actually perfect. You see how you're holding me up right now? I'm trying to be with I'm, them. I can't even physically be with them. It's right. not like they're standing there in an elevator thinking that I'm the one making the mistake. Right. And it felt good. And I and also and I, did it. I saw there. Lily turn around and she heard me say it and then I caught up with him and there was just a little twinkle in the eye and no word needed to be said. And it was like, okay, you know what? Well, my a, kids did not appreciate me in the same way. I think in their heart they might. At all, at all. I mean, they, 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 there's a little girl. All right, just go back on it then. Teach no, I'm lesson. not going back on it. Uh, and, and I will say that. You kept doing it? <sighs> okay, in the restaurant. In the restaurant, well, on the way to the restaurant, somebody asked, and I SKB'd them. And then in the restaurant, there was a family that was sitting there, and you could see, you could see it. The discussion began to happen. It's like, when are we going to go over there? Um, they waited until the we are like our desserts had come or whatever. Like we got through our meal. Okay. And uh, I guess I had, was just lost heart by that point. And they asked for, you know, a picture, and I was like, okay, we can get a quick one. I probably said it in a very unenthusiastic way, which made them that feel horrible. That sounded pretty unenthusiastic. Um, okay, we can um, get a quick one. Um, At the end of VidCon, you're I'm dr- drained, unlike any. Well, oh, like, I had literally just done the the all of Saturday and ended with oh, the gosh. meet and greet, and then yeah, it, that's I, tough. I, you know, it t- it does take we because we do try to be there. For people and be present, and some people have a story to tell that maybe uh, we don't want people to not tell us something if they've got something to say. But it is it's, it's unless you're a robot, it's an emotionally draining experience, and you're kind of just ready to pull back from all that. Well, it, if I may, I suggest that we skip from fan yeah. interactions to other types of niceties because I thought you were when you talked talking about Roy's. I thought you were actually going to talk about. The, the most quintessential nicety, which is how was your meal? Oh yeah. And I think that's another. We did a whole podcast on we that. We did a whole podcast on that one, so I don't wanna camp out there, but I think, I, I still cannot say, like toe the party line of niceness and say, cause here, here's the deal. The opposite of nice is not mean in in this conversation. The opposite of nice is not being a jerk or being cold hearted. The opposite of nice is what? Well sometimes honesty. Honesty. And you know it's it's so hard to do it because it, you just, and I, I think if I'm totally honest, if with myself now about being honest with the waiter, it's like well you know, the meal wasn't that great. I was disappointed in the so and so. It automatically, it, the reason why I don't like doing it is because it just makes you seem like an entitled jerk. It, it, Kinda it, like talking about how you got fans and you don't wanna be nice to them. Well, and I That's th- the risk, right? And I do That's th- why we don't like so, talking about it. And sometimes, and I'm sure we talked about this when we talked about it, but, and sometimes it's just not worth it. But you know, I had this happen to me when I was in North Carolina, we were at a restaurant, just Jesse and I, and, um, it was one of those situations where we were went. It was a waterfront restaurant, and we're sitting there. And then about ten minutes into, all we had was drinks at that time. Um, the waiter comes up and is like, "Would you guys like to move closer to the water?" And again, it's very difficult to not take that as like, "Is this because they knew who I am, or are they just being nice to me?" And it, uh-huh. that's a problem, you know. It turns out it was because the manager was a fan. That's how we got the table upgrade. But what's your point? You re- you refused it? No, no, no. I took it, but then 
the waitress asked me what uh, what do you want to drink? Like it was like a, a second drink or whatever, and I was like, uh, you, you, the bar's got mezcal, right? And I was like, I asked for a mezcal sour, which thanks to our, our good friend Jaden, he introduced me to that drink. I, I really like it. it mezcal is one of my favorite liquors. Smoky. And you could see on her face that immediately she didn't really know exactly what I was talking about, maybe hadn't heard that before. Uh-oh. But she was like, I think the bartender will be able to figure something out. Bring me a drink. Long story short, I drank it. The drink was really not good at all. And when she came back and asked, how's that drink? I was like, you know. Oh, you did it? It's not great. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. Man, just listen to the personal growth on this podcast. <laughs> but it, But here's the thing. I felt like an asshole. Your face because, really scrunched up, be, even when you retold it. Because I had gotten a table upgrade. Yeah. Just take it. Take what you can get at this point, man. But yeah. the thing is, is that I kind of wanted her to know that if somebody orders this drink and you give them this, they ain't gonna that be ain't happy. It. What and, did she say? And she was like, "Oh, okay." I. I it, oh. And and I. Uh, but here's where the nice guy came in. I was like, "You know, I'll probably drink it." <laughs> And I did. I'll probably drink it. I kept drinking it. That's odd. I know, man. Yeah, that. Too nice. Well, okay, this morning. Too nice. My name is D-Nice. My name is D-Nice. That's kind of the rhythm of the song, if I remember it correctly. Yeah, I'm doing the too nice stuff. You could do the D-Nice stuff. I had to Uber in this morning. Yeah, so I was nice. texting you. I was like, can I get a ride? I was working out, man. Like, nothing. And my Apple Watch battery. I'm, dies, I'm looking. So I'm looking at. I'm looking at the phone. It's like nothing. Like you were texting Stevie. Like I was on a thread with you and Stevie, and you were texting her. And then I'm on this other thread, like right below it. And I'm like, can I get it right? Nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What's going on? And then I'm like, question mark send. I did. And see then that. you're like still talking to Steve. You weren't. You were talking about being at the gym. You were. You were ghosting my ride text. I did. And then not you were like, see. I actually Ubered. I didn't see any of your like, texts. Why are you ghosting me? What I was doing is I would check in, in between like if I were in golf prison, I was working out, and then I, I had to take a shower, faith. and then I, it, you're going to come through for me. I never man. saw it until the very end, until I got through in my shower. Uh, you had Uber into, yeah, because so, our cars were here. Man, he, he, I hate, I hate, I hate riding in cars where other people are driving, because I'm so much better at it than. Everybody. <laughs> I, I, I just don't know why, like I'm trying, I'm gonna get, I'm sure I'll get into it later like teaching Lily to drive, so I'll leave that out of this. That, that's a whole other podcast. But I just pride myself on like being a smooth driver. People don't know how to stop and go. They don't, they really don't. They don't think they're, you need oh to drive gosh. like you've got an egg if you, balancing on the dashboard, if, yes. okay? And, and you that's know how what? you make an enjoyable ride. The DMV should sell those. Yeah, you'd break the egg, you lose your license. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know what? I, I'm i gonna carry one around whenever I'm in a car that's being chauffeured. You break this egg, I'll give you two stars. <laughs> <laughs> like an Uber. The Uber egg. Yes. The Uber egg. Yeah. Uber well, should sell it. Or Lyft. The Lyft yeah, egg. That just sounds like you're stealing an egg though. <laughs> okay. Um, Could be so called the rideshare egg. We were riding in, a, in an Uber to the airport, and I'm like, if you're a professional driver, you should be able to drive professionally. I mean, it, you should be good at it. But nobody gets to I get, into the details I get of that sick, stopping man. and going. I get car sick. They, they don't ever, the back no seat. one teaches that, and no one is honest about it. And I also am a control freak, It's like, yes. hey, bro, could you learn to slow down more smoothly and speed up, and don't keep tapping your brake Every five seconds. The guy, yeah, did you notice it was it was me, you, and Stevie, and we were we were going to the we were I going to the this. airport, and we never we never talked about it. But I don't know if you noticed at one point in the middle of our conversation, we were like he was like herky jerky in us around, and I'm like, I start like violently gesturing with my hands like behind him in the seat, like just like I was so angry yeah. because I was getting sick. Right. I, I don't driving. get car sick. I just don't enjoy it. But I did, I, you know, and I was so close to saying something. Like he was so friendly when we got in the car, he introduced himself, I was like, you know what? If I would've remembered his name, mm, mm. then I, I might say something now. Like, Raphael, 
<laughs> Would you mind, well, we're not in that big of a hurry. So, would you mind? I I don't I, don't, I couldn't formulate what I would say, but because I didn't know his name, I gave up. But let's say I did know his name. I I still don't know what I would have said that was n- nice, but still got my point across. Which is, hey man, we're Raphael. We're how do you do this? I don't know, Raphael. We're not in a hurry, and I'm. I'm prone to car sickness. Can you just, you know, make it more about me and like my shortcomings? I think that would be helpful. Yeah. I'm prone to car sickness. And the real, the, not in a hurry. the herky jerky stopping and going can, is very troublesome. Can you just stay in one lane and smooth it out? I mean, change lanes if we need to get in and like go on a different road. But otherwise, all this, all this aggressive stuff is, is not making me. Yeah. Like you more, but you know it'd be a lot easier if you were like, "Hey, Raphael, here's an egg. <laughs> Could you just yes, uh, yes?" And you know what? If the egg falls, you get two stars. I mean, and he'd be like, "Got it." You know, I, 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 at that point, this, I think this is I a, love this idea. Now, it's not just a regular egg, and I realize that an egg is a, it will roll off. It's an egg that's sitting on a little, a little, a, a little. A, uh, uh, what it's do you got call a it? pedestal. A pedestal, and then it it can teeter off in any yeah, yeah, way. Yeah. The, its natural state is to be balanced, and you know if there's a sudden stop. But I didn't say anything. Yeah, it, here's an even more pointed example. This morning on the Uber, I almost sat in the front seat, but then it drastically increases the chances that I have to talk to the driver. So I sat in the back seat mm. and I got car sick because the guy's herky jerky and all over the place, like busting the egg that I don't have because mm-hmm. the brilliant idea had not been hatched. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that wasn't the thing. The thing was, we're, he, he's getting in the carpool lane. I was like, oh, this is good. We're passing a lot of people on like the, I don't know, the 134 or whatever that is. And then it's like, we gotta get on the five, but he's over here in the 134 and I'm, I look at his GPS and I'm and you can get out of the carpool lane, it's got the dotted lines, like this is the place that he needs to get over to get, to take my exit onto the five. Yep, yep, D- can't wait too late. And he's darting and he's going so fast and I look at his GPS and first of all, he had a GPS and most of them do, but you'd be surprised how many drivers never look at the GPS because it's down on their lap or something. And he had it mounted up there so I could see it. And I'm like, okay, this guy, I like this guy. And it and it still said 134. So it, it was not telling him to get on the five yet. In the next few yards, it actually did change, but by that point he was he was trapped in the carpool lane and could not legally exit it. Oh, gosh. But I'm seeing all this unfold, and we're 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 back a couple of notches. Um, it's still telling him to stay on the in the carpool lane or on the 134. I know he needs to exit, but I couldn't say anything. <laughs> Just like for the previous ten minutes, it was hot as Hades in the back seat, and I could not bring myself to ask him to turn the AC up. Really, I, I, I've seen you do that with a driver. I've seen, I've and seen I'm having you this internal dialogue. I'm an like, adjustment before. it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Somehow, me asking him to change the AC would be is not nice. It's like it's you know, I'll blame you. You've guilted me into not putting my <laughs> peculiarity on the people. But th- so well, and then so I couldn't even tell him to exit. And then he's like, he's going straight and he's trapped in the carpool lane. I'm like, this is gonna add 15 to 20 minutes to yeah, my this ride. this could be disastrous. This is horrible. Yeah, this could be the end of the world. And so I'm like, um, I really think you need to get, you need to take this exit, um, but there's no real way out of the carpool lane. And he's like, oh, and at that point the GPS changed to mm. say he needed to exit. Mm-hmm. And he just broke the law and just did it. And I'm like, Good. I'm so glad he did that. Yeah. Like even if he'd have broke the egg at that point, I would have yeah, yeah. given him five stars. But he's, He's like going over, and I'm like, yeah, you know, the GPS is always late at this point. I'm totally lying. Yeah, that's I'm not, making this not, up. not true, right? I'm totally making this up. Yeah, making it feel good. Yeah, the GPS, the only thing I've said to the guy besides, uh, that was your exit, was then at, yeah, 
the GPS is always late at this point and it's difficult because you're trapped in the carpool lane. Yep. And he's like, what did he say? He said something weird. And I was like, is he talking to me or himself? It was like, it was basically like, I, yeah, I, I'm fine, man. It was like that, so I'm fine, man. Yeah, I've done this before. <laughs> and I, I don't need your commentary. <laughs> and I was like, well, I was trying or to be en- nice. Or encouragement. I think I, you know. He was saying he didn't need, he didn't need the emotional support that you were offering. Yeah, probably didn't. It's just, it, it, I, I'm so, it, it's just hard to tell a driver what you want. It's like, is he my driver at this moment? Like, uh. Hey, you know what? You should be in the far. I have so many opinions, you know. I do know, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, but even I, even I am overridden with niceness at that point. To a fault. Well, I had missing exits and stuff. I, uh, I also Ubered in and uh, had Ubered to the gym and then Uber from the gym to here, and so I had two different drivers this morning. And uh, driver number one, I sat in the front seat because he had a very small car, and I was like, it's sometimes in the back seat with me, my head will hit the ceiling. Yeah, he got in your, most cars actually. You got your chin on your knees. And um, you know, there was some small talk about the weather, and I was like, is this going to turn into a conversation? Mm. Um, and of course, I'm hoping not. He brought up the weather because you're in the front seat. Yeah, no, I'm inviting this. But I was told that the app will now, you can indicate on the app if you want, if you're a conversationalist or not. And I know I said that. I haven't looked into that. You said you're not. What? A conversationalist. I, I, I was told that that option but exists, have, but I, I have not seen I don't it know either. What the is. So I ended up just kind of getting on my phone and, uh, and then I th- started thinking again. I feel like if you look at a pie chart of my brain activity at this point, you know, at least 10%, sometimes revving up to 30 to 40% of my brain activity is focused on what this guy thinks of me. And it isn't even in the context of what his rating is gonna be of me. It's literally like, does this guy gonna think I'm a jerk because I'm on my phone the whole time? Or is he gonna think that I'm like, Addicted to my phone. Like, why do I care? And Who even, cares? Even saying nice things is not really about being nice. As mu- and maybe this is the key to unlocking some new practice: is the realization that our niceties are are much more about us and about shaping perception than it is about actually being nice to somebody, being kind to someone. I think a lot of it is just rooted in ego. Yeah. I do. I, I I think there is a, there is a, a this very human thing to do, but I think that one of the reasons that sometimes you may interpret an older person as being blunt or not nice, sometimes they are just jerks. But I think in a lot of cases it's that they have actually lost some of their ego as they've gotten older, which if you're healthy, I think is the direction that you should be heading in, that mm-hmm. you're, you're getting less and less about yourself and more and more about others as you get older. And so I do think that, a, and I like to use the word candidness because I do think that sometimes that's what it is. It's just like, this person told me what they thought. This, And again, it's not being super, I do think that sometimes uh, being super particular about things and then expecting everybody to fall in line, that can become an annoying thing, right? But I don't think that's what asking somebody to adjust the temperature if you're hot in an Uber is about. I think it's like, well, I kinda don't wanna be burning up back here and I know that this person probably actually does care about what temperature it is. Some th- drivers ask you, is it okay? Is it okay back there? So it's not, it's reasonable and not jerky to say something about it, but I think that it, a big part of it is this like reputation management with people that you'll never see again, which is weird. Yeah. But it's just this wanting so badly to be liked and to not ruffle feathers that you end up doing a disservice to people. Um, and, I, and I do think that we. I, and yourself, because you're blazing up in the back seat. I think that's a term for smoking weed, and that's not what I mean. Right. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but I think there's also a button for that on the app. My name is D-Nice. I'm gonna blaze up, just be ready. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a conversationalist blazer. Uh, I've never thought about that, but I have thought about, Could I? can I just bring Jade in an Uber? This is just a tangent, but I was wondering that this morning. Mm. And again, for niceness, I was like. I would think so. I don't want a negative rating, because this whole rating thing is part of it too. Like, it's a quantified version of what we're talking about. It's like, I'm gonna treat you in a way, not that I want to be treated or just because you're another human that I wanna be nice to, I wanna treat you in a way so that you will give me a good rating. That's messed up, man. I literally think about my rating on Uber. I have no clue what it is and I don't think it has any bearing on anything. I don't know when it comes into play and I don't know when people can make a, uh, uh, come to a conclusion about it. I don't But if Jade was just sitting in my lap, she'd be here right now. I don't think it would be a problem. I, I guess there are some Uber, maybe, maybe, plenty of, maybe all. Plenty of people who'd have a problem with a dog in their car. Maybe all rideshare operators have to be okay with dogs. Maybe they indicate that somewhere on the app. Maybe, I, I don't know, that's a good question. We don't know the answer. Cause I mean, especially with Jade, it's like Jade is not, you know, a giant dog. If you have a great Dane or something like that, keep, that could keep be a her problem. Hidden. Wouldn't even know she was there. Um, yeah, so the, I mean, what about niceness when it comes to content? Because, you know, the stuff that we create, that there are, there are entire channels built on, well, uh, of course there's entire channels built on drama. I'm not really, I'm not talking about drama as much as, I don't know, I guess this is, um, this is like a, a bordering territory to it that I'll just call hot, the hot takes, man. You know, you've got an opinion on something and you've, you know, so much, and it's not just digital content, but like radio for years, television, all types of talk content is, so we can talk about it as it relates to Ear Biscuits, is successful because it's just, it's, it's hot takes, it's it's opinions, it's, I mean, and a lot of times there's a, there's a lot of, there could be like some, it's supercharged with some vitriol, some anger, some, some bitterness, some, um, just like complaints, like the opposite of being nice, being brutally honest, or just having a punchy opinion. And that's not, we maybe we started to do a little bit of that, but not really. I, I think that when we, on Ear Biscuits, we, we kinda, we resist the urge to like give our unfettered opinions on things because I, do you think there's a niceness component there? What what's going on there? Are we too nice when it comes to our content? Well, I think there's. I think that's. I think that's part of it. Um, yeah, I think it's really complex because I do think that there is just something about our personalities naturally, whether it's niceness or however you would want to describe it. That we don't tend to be. Uh, we're both opinionated for sure, but when it comes to the types of opinions and hot takes that would be the kind of thing that would uh, people would care about on the internet, that's not really a natural part of our dialogue. We don't spend a lot of time thinking and talking about those things, but I also think that because we were so focused on just making people laugh and for a number of reasons, and we'll probably do a podcast on this at, at, at some point, like why we approached our content the way we did in the early days and like why, you know, why it started so family friendly, like more family friendly than it is now. Um, it's still generally family friendly, but it was like squeaky clean G rated from the very beginning. Yeah. I think you attract a certain audience that's like, oh, these guys are gonna do something that never offends people and is just all about being lighthearted. And then when you build a fan base around that, you kind of cornered yourself a little bit. Whereas, you know, and uh, one of the f things that Harley from Epic Mealtime said, probably at this table, uh, was that you kind of get what you give to your audience. You get back what you give. And he gives his tone, especially at the time, was very like, harsh towards his audience and you kind of attract people who like that kind of thing and then yeah. they kind of give it back. So I think that we've we've actually developed a 
pretty nice community uh, because the content isn't vitriolic in any way. And that's and we're proud of that. That's, that is something right. to be proud that, of. That's a good but thing. But even me saying that right now is like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't want it. To, I don't want it to seem like I'm being critical of our, of our core audience or an aspect of our, a contingent of our audience taste. You well, know, it's okay. Like, well, here, here's where I think that here's an, a perfect example of because I'm not being critical. Of where them. I think that the audience that we cultivated, uh, and how nice they were and are, uh, for the most part, created a content problem for us. And that is with our local commercials, right? We've talked about this a number of yeah, times. Yeah, that's a good that's a good case study, though. Uh, we've ne- we've never really been into prank content per se. We did that one prank video, or uh, we've done a number we, of we, pranks, okay, like we, uh, all of our men on the street videos. Yeah, they, yeah, they were were they're kind of prank inspired, and they're kind of they're, make people feel awkward. At they're least. based on making normal people feel a little bit out of sorts and getting some laughs at their expense. Yeah, not in a super mean spirited way, but. For some people, anything in that realm is mean spirited. And the nature of the local commercials that we made back in the day and then on Commercial Kings, which is still back in the day, this is a long time ago. Of course, we used real businesses and real people from those businesses. And the thing that we found so funny is when we put normal people into these situations, these ridiculous sort of structures that we created for them, and they just did their thing, you're kind of laughing at slash with them and everybody ends up being happy and it's good for business and people are people love the result. But one of the reasons it's not that clear cut though. A lot of people are uncomfortable with it is because a really, really strict interpretation of it is that you're ha- you're laughing at these people, you're having fun and humor at their expense. And some people are not comfortable with that at all. So now we are both very comfortable with that. It's a little bit of a generational thing. I do think that the younger generation is much less comfortable with it. Although I will say that even though I didn't encourage this, like my kids are much like I was at their age. Like some people can't watch that, the show that we talked about uh, on Impractical Jokers. Some people can't watch that because they're like, I don't just don't like to see anybody be made to feel uncomfortable. They love it. Yeah. They, they think it's great. Um, but we ended up stopping doing those commercials because we just ended up. Uh, getting, one of the reasons was we just ended up getting so much pushback because people would be like, this doesn't seem like, this isn't the the stuff that I like you guys for. This just seems a little bit mean. Mean spirited. And so we just were like, okay, well, it's not like we have to keep doing this. We did a bunch of it. We can move on to something else. Yeah. I So I do think that that is, a, is an example of our niceness in general and especially in things like GMM, cultivating an audience that then couldn't really take the non-nice Content. Yeah, and I was talking to Aaron from Game Grumps, and he was he was talking about his their talk show, which um, you know is inspired format wise by Good Mythical Morning, the Ten Minute Power Hour, uh, which we're big fans of. Um, and he was talking about how he said, "Yeah, it's you know he was talking about the GMM influence on on how they created that, but he was like, but you know we've got." The tone is a little different because we got a bit more of that F U energy. Like you guys don't really have like F U energy. And I was saying something mm. about their Reddit mm. contingent. Yeah. And and he was like, you know, the people that respond to that are the people who then they'll like F you in the comments. But then when we looked at how much merch we were selling. We they had a whole they have a whole Reddit thread that them or none of their crew has anything to do with because it's it's just all the fans who just hate on them. <laughs> but he said that a remarkable percentage. Of course, I don't remember the number because I don't I don't have mental capacity to remember other people's numbers. Right, you're thinking about your vacation. <laughs> he, uh, he said that it was a big contingent of merch sales are from those people who are like constantly f u f u because they're like they're very invested and they're fans. You know, it's just a, it's a different way you, of expressing. You get it. what you give, and it's you know I I'm a little envious of of that energy because I don't know it from a comedic standpoint. It seems I don't I don't know what the word is. It just seems more. 
emphatic, comedically emphatic. You know, when you're when you're doing something that can be is edgy or so uh, quite literally edgy. So it it pushes you either one way or the other. Mm. All right? Um it's it's easy to subconsciously feel like that's a more legitimate form of comedy because it's sending you in one of two directions, either love or hate, versus just like um like I think when we're, you know, our tone, it, it's very welcoming. So it's like, you can also, oh, I can tolerate it. <laughs> you know, it's like where someone may be left. And we, and and I think that we end up compensating for it a little bit because again, if we were just completely ourselves, throw caution to the wind, we would be more offensive than we are. I mean, it's just, if, if, we, if we were, if there was no guard up at all as to what, is a more broadly appealing, welcoming sort of tone, it would be a more caustic tone. It just would be. Of course we have more opinions than we share. Yeah, and and, you, and, and, I, and, and also, I know that people are gonna say they want more of that. Well, and you might think that, oh. Now well, that we're talking about it. You might it. just say, well, that would come, well, I can see that coming from Rep, but from Link. No, the re reality is it would come from, it would come from both of us. I don't wanna speak for, for yeah, you. I, no, but you're exactly It's not right. just a thing that comes from the bitter, tall one. Um, but you know, interestingly, um, you're kind of you're also kind of talking about uh, you know, com like stand up comedy as an example, the purest form of comedy, right? Um, which we've never really, I mean, we do it kind of, but we haven't done like traditional stand up, definitely not alone. I thought farts were the purest form of comedy. Go ahead. Um, are you saying that because my seat just made a farting noise? No, I was just making a joke. Um, the. <laughs> the whole give and take that you have with an audience and the fact that if you're going to speak up at, at, to a comedian, he or she is going to rip you a new one and that's part of the act. Heckling and then responding to hecklers is part of being a great stand-up. And a certain type of stand-up though. I, I don't think that applies uh, to all stand -up. Well, well, no, no, even even the, the nicest comedian. Like a Brian Regan? Even the nicest comedian. A Gaffigan? Is not going, Gaffigan, okay, is not, I guarantee you that when he does his live stand up and somebody heckles him that he gets the best of them oh, because sure. you can't yeah. exist. Now how mean spirited is it? You know, and it's even like when we kind of do that when on tour. You yeah. know, we don't do anything that's like ridiculously uh you know, vindictive or whatever, but if you if you if you're going to have the courage to speak up at our tour, we're going to end up doing something that's going to make you make people laugh at you. And and it, but it's all in good fun. I I definitely don't want to get into a place where we're we're not willing to just like light ribbing is no longer allowed. But but how I think the question is is like how does it work its way into the content? What are we afraid of? And you know, how do you navigate it? Because just another quick data point is when we were guests on the H. Lee podcast, big fans of Ethan and Ela and their growing family of sons and dogs. Well, they got one of each. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's hot tech central over there. It's, and it's, it's extremely entertaining. Like it's, 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 it's hot takes for the sake of entertainment. Like that's why I enjoy it. It's almost like taking a position just for the laughs a, a lot of time, um, not all the time. So and so being on there was like, especially I, you know, I I think when it comes to the type of things they talk about, you're more informed and more opinionated about those specific things. So that felt like more of an outlet for you to be there um, than it did for me. But it, um, I think there were other things that would that would get me going. Probably germs, or you know, but um, <clears throat> or or herky jerky Uber, Uber drivers. But the type of stuff they talk about was something that, like, I mean, we don't go into that stuff on our podcast. Smosh does some of that on their podcast mm -hmm. because it it is a it is a great way to to develop a fan base if that's something you, if that's a way you're interested in talking about things. But it's. It's it. I I don't. You tell me what you think. I don't think that's a place where we've we've made a decision that that's not what that's not, that's not a place that we go. You know, and I'm not talking about YouTube drama as much as 
like current event hot take type stuff where it's, you, you, you cannot be nice. You cannot come across as nice. That's not, that's not part of the equation in those conversations. Well, I feel like trying to incorporate drama or commentary about controversial things into what we're currently doing would be a little bit of a betrayal. Um, and I, 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 because I feel like there's so much of that, right? Now, because we're, we're not out, just out there. We're not just throwing what we create into a, into a vacuum. Like we, it is experienced in the greater context of internet and entertainment in general. And we are so polarized right now, right? So I is is opinionated as I am, and as uh, bitter as I can be <laughs> about some things. I do think there's something to be said for the fact that our show and our content in general is something people can come together over around. People of differing backgrounds, people of differing political opinions should be able to come to our show and be like, this is something that we can agree on. And I do think there's power in that. Some people call it a cop out, some people say you're doing that just so you can make more money and have a broadly appealing product. I actually, Personally, and I think we both, I think I speak for both of us, but I know that that's something that I care about is I don't like the disunity in our world and in our country. It's needed now more than ever. Uh, and I think that. Something that brings us together. And I do think that we have, a, we're kind of special, especially uh, equipped to kind of bring people together. You know, we understand multiple perspectives you know, having embodied multiple multiple perspectives over the course of our lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that puts us in a position to be like, hey, it's not, all these people aren't bad and all these people aren't bad. It's like, hey, let, like there's some, like, let's have a dialogue. There are some things that we can agree on. Now we don't end up talking directly about those things very often. Uh, but so I do think it would be a little bit of disservice to be like, all of a sudden, we're gonna be talking about all this stuff and we're gonna be throwing our opinions out there and you know, blasting people who disagree. Like that's just not the spirit of what we do. But I do think the thing that, the one of the reasons that like what Ethan and Ela do is appealing, or what Game Grumps does is appealing, is because it's more fun to just let your guard down. It's more fun to just be honest and be like, I don't really care about the impact or the consequences because I'm just being myself. To have a little filter and a guard on everything you say, it's a little bit tiresome. So I do think that yeah. as you get older, and I think this is one of the reason that there is there is more innuendo, as an example, in all of our content now than there was when we started, is because, you know what, when we talk privately, there is a lot of innuendo, like that we just, I we both find sexual innuendo to be very funny and we use a lot of it in our normal private lives. So We also did when we were in seventh we've grade. We've always done it. Do from you the, remember? From the very beginning. But we haven't done it in our content, right? And until it's just you, you fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred episodes, you just become a little bit more yourself. And I think that there's something freeing about that. And, mean, and that's a place. I think the sexual innuendo is a place where we've, without we talked about it some, and we st we continue to talk about the the ways that we the lines the the ways that we will incorporate in you in the ways we want. So we know what like what our best practices are to use the corporate term. But in an effort to conclude this conversation, I, I think that it's, I need to have a prolonged thought. We've got time. Yeah, in an effort to come to a conclusion, I think that we can, we, it, it, I feel good with the summary that you've given of hey we're 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 trying to create things in conversations where uh it it can it can be an outlet for for anybody that simple well i would say that that's a principle that applies to our content we don't want to be a you know a dividing force we don't want to be a polarizing force in the world because there's enough of that already that doesn't mean that there are some things that we consider to be non-political 
but just human issues that need to be addressed that we will take a stand on and talk about. Uh, and that's at our discretion as we see fit. But I think that as time goes by, we will continue to be more and more ourselves. Yeah, uh, I, and, I, I think it, it, it's, yeah, the balancing point, just to piggyback on that is, yeah, we're, go, we're not gonna be fake. We're not gonna be nice and lie lie through our teeth just to be nice. Yeah. You know, we're, I, wanna, I wanna be nice when I actually mean what I'm saying. I don't wanna say anything here that I do not mean. So exactly. I think, and that's why, we, that's why we choose our topics of conversation. And, and I think that, you know, I've seen, you, you, you see the chatter and the speculation sometimes when people are trying to figure out like what, you know, what things lead to the evolution of the show over time or the, the way we talk. And I think one of the thing, one of the accusations that can be levied sometimes is that, oh, you guys are continuing to push the boundaries because you want your content to be more accepted, or you're 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 doing this to get more attention or to get people to care about you. And I think that, well, the reality is, is that we've kind of always talked this way, <laughs> but the longer we do it, the more the layers get pulled back, and you see who we are. Uh, and I personally, that's something that I, I mean, I've been focusing on this personally a lot just through therapy, honestly. It's just like getting out of my head, getting into my heart, living more from a place of feeling because I've done enough thinking. <laughs> I've done a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of that is continuing to kind of let go of what people think about you, continuing to have your ego hopefully continue to be drained as you get older. Um, and I think a, just a natural result of that is that you're just gonna be more of yourself. And so the things that we do aren't a result of trying to be provocative of trying to get more views. We're always gonna be trying to get more views with just what, you know, we're trying to be successful, but it's really us being more of ourselves. And I think that ultimately to tie it back to the original question, it's that we're not as nice as you think we are if you thought we were really nice. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's a broad word, but I think that if some of but these there things, there is a core niceness that as long that we're we're striving to be nice as long as it's true to who we to ourselves. Yeah. Um, hashtag your biscuits. Let us know uh, what you think. Join in on the conversation. Rex in effect. Um, I'm, I'll give a music wreck. Been listening to Bahamas. I don't think I've wrecked Bahamas. I think we've talked about it personally because I'm like, we used to really be into Jack Johnson, that like laid back. You talk about Roy and his Hawaiian vibe with his elevator. Yeah, elevator goes slow when you're listening to some Jack Johnson. Back in the day, Bahamas is kind of like my updated Jack Johnson. And the specific song that I'm gonna recommend is, gotta turn, why do I gotta turn my, I gotta take it out of airport mode. I know it's airplane mode. Off the album, Bahamas is Affie. I think that's the guy's first name, A-F-I-E. Um, All the Time's a good song, but stronger than that, you start listening to that song and it sounds like Islands in the Stream. Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton duo, duet, and then I mean, you think he's just gonna start singing like, like Kenny Rogers, but then he doesn't. Are they from the Bahamas? He sings like Bahamas, it's one guy. Is he from the Bahamas? No, I think he just channels that vibe. Okay. I can't say, but uh, if you like that vibe, check it out, especially that song. Yes, thanks for sticking with us, for uh, listening to this conversation, that we didn't know where it was gonna go, but it went where it went, and uh, It'll continue to go where it's gonna go, but it's not gonna go anywhere next week or for the next three weeks because we're taking a little break. Uh, we'll be back on August 8th, what is it? 19th. August 19th. August 19th, we'll be back from our epic vacations. We'll be talking to you about those. Until then, hashtag your biscuits. 
To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.